Hi guys, welcome to Preliminary Chemistry and Metals video number 19. This one's going to look at the gas laws and I should emphasize at this stage um, that this is a voluntary, uh, let me just change that up, this is a voluntary video. It's kind of an explanatory one which links some of the important ideas but it's not something that's, that specifically deals with some of the components of the course. Nevertheless, there are a number of factors that affect a gas and its behavior, I guess, in, in under different uh, circumstances. The first is how much of it we have, the quantity of the gas. And this is represented by the symbol N for number of moles. We can, can use Avogadro's law to convert this into molecules or atoms, um, but moles is the most convenient unit that we use in chemistry. Temperature is also very important, and the temperature for um, gases is given in the Kelvin scale. Uh, the Kelvin scale, or one degree uh, Celsius, is equivalent to one Kelvin in increments. The only difference is they start from a different point. So um, the Kelvin scale, uh, scale starts from zero. And this is equivalent to minus 273 degrees C. So basically, all we're doing is adding 273 degrees um, uh, in order for us to get from the Kelvin scale to the Celsius scale. The third thing that's important is pressure. And that's uh, the symbol for pressure is obviously P, and it's measured in generally kilopascals or uh, atmospheres of pressure. And the final one is volume. Uh, and volume, or capital V, is expressed in litres. So these are the standard units, and these are the four important descriptors of gases. And when we look at the behaviour of different gases, we tend to look at what happens when we keep some of these constant and change the others. Being good scientists, of course, we only want two things to change, so we can look at cause and effect. And that means of these four quantities, two must remain constant if we want to investigate the relationship between the other two. This has already been done and it's produced four different laws that we'll quickly look at in this series. The first and one of the ones that's not part of your curriculum is Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law is ironically probably the easiest one. And that is if the number of moles and the temperature are both constant, then we can see a direct relationship between pressure and volume. That is, if you increase the pressure, you decrease the volume. The simplest way to keep the number of moles or the number of particles the same and the temperature the same is to um, have a direct relationship between increasing pressure and decreasing volume or decreasing pressure and increasing volume. This is our mathematical relationship that represents this process and it means P times V is a constant or where I is initial conditions and F is final conditions. The ratio, uh, the, the multiple of pressure times volume initially will be equal to the pressure times the volume finally. So you can actually work out changes uh, mathematically using this law. The same is true for Charles' law. In this case, though, it's the pressure and the number of moles that are constant. And so this time we're looking at the relationship between volume and temperature. In this case, in order for pressure and the number of moles to remain constant, then there must be a direct relationship between volume and temperature. That is, as we increase the volume, we would lose pressure. So if we want to keep pressure the same, we must move the particles more quickly. Increasing the temperature increases the heat energy, transfer to kinetic energy, and so therefore this is an easy way of doing that. What that means is that in this case, it is the... Um, inverse, I guess, uh, relationship that's going to hold as far as, or well, the quotient, I should say, that's going to hold as far as our initial and final conditions are concerned. So if we're going to find a relationship between each of these two things, then um, V initial over T initial is equal to V final over T final. And that, of course, brings us to the two laws that we do need to know about, which is firstly the Gay-Lussac law, and that is what we find when the number of moles, sorry, the number of moles, let me get rid of that, number of moles and the volume are constant. And this is a relationship between pressure and temperature. 
okay? The relationship between pressure and temperature is that um, pressure is directly proportional to temperature. For the volume to change and for us not to change uh, the volume in any way and to keep the same number of particles, the only way we can increase the pressure is to increase the temperature. Again, as we saw with Charles' law, then it's the quotient that is a constant. So PI over TI equals PF over TF. So again, holding two of these constant um, gives us two others. Now we also know that the gay lussac uh, relationship is about combining gas volumes, and we'll use these uh, more specifically in the next video. The final one is Avogadro's law. And Avogadro's law is what happens when we keep pressure and temperature constant. So you can see each of these laws is, is related to those four key uh, quantities and what happens to two of them if we keep the other two constant. And once again, in this case, if we want both pressure and temperature to remain constant, um, then to increase the volume, the only way we can have that happen is if we have a greater number of moles that are actually, or greater number of particles that are actually moving around in that volume. And therefore, again, the quotient rule applies. V over N is a constant, and uh, V over N initial conditions is equivalent to V over N final conditions. Now, this just gives you a little bit of context for some of the um, work that we do in looking at um, stoichiometry related to the gas laws. There is an ideal gas equation which relates all of these together, but that's something for university. Thanks for watching.